Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. I am in my kitchen. I'm just getting some coffee. It's not really coffee. It's, um, let's see what it is. This is what I'm having this morning. It is like a caffeine-free herbal thing, but it tastes exactly like coffee. It's a flavored coffee and it is so, so delicious. I get this one from Azure Standard but you can also order from their website. Anyways, I am just making my second cup of it, um, and we are gonna do a little bit of a freezer clean out this morning. I got out earlier this morning when I was feeding my animals, and I picked a whole bunch of basil. So I have some just regular basil here. It's kind of a combination of three different varieties. And then I have a sink full of lemon basil and I am just going to make that into tea and dry some and this stuff I'm probably just going to end up drying most of it. I've done already kind of my preserving that I need to do with my basil like as far as like making pestos and stuff like that. Um, but one thing that we are doing this weekend is we are actually processing our chickens. So I need to that glare every time I have my glasses on that glare but I can't see anything without them on <laughs> I need to get like some anti-glare glasses anyways we're processing the chickens this weekend and I need to make a little bit of freezer space I have pretty much the right amount of freezer space but I think what's gonna happen is as soon as we put them in there it's just gonna be a little bit too tight Actually, you know what we're gonna do? We might open up the garage door and let some fresh air in here. So I know I have a whole bunch of frozen fruit in here. I have some raspberries from last year and I have some strawberries from last year. And then we have a whole bunch of blackberries. So what we're going to do today is we are going to make some strawberry raspberry jam and some blackberry jam. Hopefully I can get them both done. Um, Got a couple things of frozen raspberries. These are obviously they're still frozen. We're just pulling them from the freezer. So we're just gonna make the jam from frozen. Might take a little extra time. Last year I made a raspberry strawberry jam and it was so so delicious. I used Pomona's pectin so I didn't have to put as much sugar in it and it just it's my favorite jam so I want to get more of that made and then I think we only have three things of blackberry jam left so that's why I want to get some of that made. Plus we're just wanting to clear the freezer out. The other cool thing that I'm going to put in my blackberry jam because I just have it is I have it's hard to see because it's in this bag but in here oh no gonna focus in on it. Anyways, these are huckleberries. I have a couple of little tiny huckleberry plants out there and I'm just gonna put them in my blackberries because this is all I have right now. Huckleberries are almost like a flavorless berry. They are very, very, very bland. That's why they make a really good jam because you're adding sugar to it so it kind of adds a little bit more sweetness to them. But they are just bland by themselves like you I could not sit there and eat them because they honestly don't taste like anything so I'm just gonna put some in my blackberry jam and we'll uh, see how that goes I don't know how much strawberries and raspberries I need I have so many bags of them in here and these are all from last year so I really want to get these done. this is my bag of blackberries this I think is a two gallon bag. It's a lot of blackberries. So we might be doubling the batch. <laughs> oh, my glasses back on so I can see. Okay, so what else do we need to get cleared out of here? These are raspberries from this year, so I want to keep these ones. We have five pounds of blueberries. Which Stephen isn't a huge fan of blueberries, but I do love them on like granola or yogurt. So I am going to keep some of my 
berries in here so that I can eat them throughout the winter. Like I'm not getting rid of absolutely everything in here. And then I froze a whole bunch of cabbage this year from my garden. I just cut them into slices like, I call them steak slices. I blanch them first and then vacuum seal them in here and then in the winter I can have cabbage because honestly my cabbage has not been doing good the last couple of years so freeze it when I can. I love to also shred it up and freeze it and then this stuff I use to make like chicken chow mein. Perfect for that. I don't know if you can hear it. Probably can't because I was rummaging in the freezer but we have our new little chicks that we hatched out I mean they're not little anymore they're getting old enough anyways about six of them are roosters and there's a rooster over there crowing and it I don't know if you could hear that it sounds like a car accident it's so funny it almost sounds like car squealing like <laughs> They're having a competition to see who is the dominant one, I think. <laughs> so funny. I laugh now because they're little. I won't be laughing when they're big and they're loud and obnoxious. We don't keep roosters. We do not keep roosters around here. If I need to hatch out eggs, I will go to a farm nearby where I can get a dozen eggs for $2 and I will hatch them out. But we just don't keep it roosters. I am not a fan. Better shut this freezer. I'm not a fan to being woken up at five in the morning with the rooster crowing. I know that is such the homesteading farm thing that you're not a homesteader unless you have a rooster, but I just don't, I can't, I can't deal with it. <laughs> I hate it actually. Anyways, let's finish this freezer before everything melts. Well, I guess it's not so bad if it melts because we're going to be making jam with it anyways. The other thing that I've actually been kind of, not stockpiling, but been putting more in the freezer is sourdough bread loaves. I think I have, I only have two in here. I've been trying to make extra loaves of bread so that we have bread available when I just don't have time to make it. Um, so I have a couple loaves in here that will be good high crust in here that mm, should I use it today? Yeah, that's fine. Oh and I had some sweet potatoes that I actually bought last year and they were starting to go bad so a couple days ago I made a whole bunch of sweet potato fries so we have a couple gallon bags of those. I love to keep muffins in the freezer like these are what are these strawberry muffins I love to have them in the freezer because then I can just defrost them and then I can have just a couple of muffins. I usually like to freeze a majority of them because I don't eat enough muffins that I'm going to eat like a dozen, you know, before they go bad. So putting them in the freezer is one thing I like to do. One last thing I grabbed was some pre-cooked sausage. I just grabbed this because tomorrow I actually want to make some sausage and gravy for breakfast. So I'm grabbing the pre-cooked stuff. I'm going to shut that garage door. It is now officially circada season and they are so, so loud. And I didn't realize how humid it was outside. So we'll get that shut. It's hot out there. Well, not hot. It's not hot compared to what we have been getting the last couple of weeks. It has definitely been cooled down substantially. Okay, let me go get the rest of the berries. I found some okra in the freezer from last year, so I'm just going to give this to the chickens because we have a whole bunch of new okra starting to grow. And that's the beautiful thing about having chickens is that you don't actually ever really have food waste because I just turned this into eggs.
Before I can get started on my jam project, I need to get this area kind of cleaned up. I have a couple of dishes that I need to get quickly done because whenever I start a project, I cannot start it with a dirty slate. I am kind of, I guess we'll call it OCD. I'll, I'll, I'll claim it and I'll own it. I'm OCD for sure. Um, I like to have everything really clean because I feel like I already have a small enough work surface that I need to have as much available as possible. So I'm gonna get this quickly cleaned up and then we can start the jam project. blackberries from my garden are kind of bitter because it got really 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 hot and they just they were not happy with the heat so they don't have like a lot of sweetness to them so by adding them to these other blackberries these other blackberries are ones that um, I actually went and picked up from a berry farm that is maybe about 45 minutes uh, east of us and it is an all organic berry farm. You can pick your own or they pick it for you. I fell in love with this place because he does the exact same practices that I do. He does rotational grazing for lamb and chickens. They actually sell them also, but it is a beautiful, beautiful berry farm. Anyways, I got um, a whole bunch of blackberries from there. So we're also gonna add our huckleberries into here. And then I also got our raspberries and strawberries in here. Hopefully this will be enough to double it. It looks like it's a lot more right now because these are frozen and they're like not mashed up. So hopefully this will be enough. Okay, so we've got our berries thawing. Next, we need to get this basil put back outside so that this can start drying so that we can have basil tea in the winter. This is a lemon basil. Now I, I do want to leave some out though. Um, I have a half gallon jar here. I'm going to make some lemon basil tea. So I want to leave about three cups of it so that I can fit it in here. We have our basil in here. This is maybe approximately three cups, maybe two cups of lemon basil. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some boiling water over top of it. Let this steep for about 20 minutes. The longer you let it steep, the stronger the tea tastes. And then I'm going to strain it out, put some honey in it. I usually end up putting like half a cup, three quarters cup of honey and a little bit of lemon juice. And it is amazing. I um, only have a little bit left, so it's time to restock. I get that going also. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to get my chocolate mint put away. Where did I put it? I go through this so quickly. So I've just been trying to keep the plant cut down and just been going out and drying it. And then once it's dried, it usually only takes like not even a week to dry out there. And then I just put it in this bag and then I have tea for the winter. This is just such a delicious, delicious treat chocolate mint and because it's a mint it just grows like crazy we are gonna head to the greenhouse and put these away but I actually first of all want to come and check the turkeys because when I was in there putting the basil away I was hearing one of them kind of squawking quite a bit and I just want to double check on them make sure they're okay is everybody fine Is everybody fine? Look fine. So the turkeys are in that little tiny coop. <sighs> They're mad because I didn't bring them snacks. So the turkeys are in the little coop because this happened. We had a storm come through Sunday night and because we went from warm, like really, really hot weather to summer weather, I call this summer weather because we're in like the mid 80s. Anyways, 
really bad thunderstorm and it had a lot of wind and it just demolished their coop. We're so thankful that the turkeys were actually alive. I came out on Monday morning, they were all in there still, well, not all of them. Four of them were kind of wandering around, but because turkeys are the most amazing, amazing bird, they are my favorite, they came running up to me and followed me right back into the coop. And I realized I cannot, for obvious reasons, cannot keep them in there. So what we're gonna do is, once the meat birds are done this weekend, we're gonna take the turkeys out of that small little coop. We're gonna put them into the mobile coop and then just kind of run them around the property. We are gonna slowly kind of putter and try to get that fixed. We may end up having to buy a new kennel. What it is, is it's just an old dog kennel. Um, so if we can't get a fix, we may end up having to buy like at least half of a side of it to try to fix it. Um, because I'm not thinking, Anyways, I'm easily distracted by butterflies. So I completely forgot what I was saying now. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't think that this coop is gonna be big enough for nine turkeys to get them through the 20 weeks. But at least it'll buy us some time to kind of repair that coop, let that coop kind of get a little bit more grass grown in it, and then we'll put them in it like when they're really starting to get a lot more bigger. And then that way we can keep the turkeys out on pasture, which is what we want. We want to have pasture raised animals. And by pasture raised, I just mean we wanna be able to rotate them to fresh grass every day. So yeah, that happened this weekend. Okay, let's go and get this into the greenhouse and then we will get started on the jam project. Speaking of cicadas, there's one in here. Ugh, hate them. So nasty. Let's get this put in here. Get this done quick. In and out. I already put the regular basil up in here. I love that borage is just popping up everywhere I didn't plant it. It is such a beautiful, beautiful plant. I did plant it here and it just gets so big that it falls over and this is why it tends to volunteer everywhere because it just drops its leaves. But it is really beautiful, the bees love it. And it is 100% edible. It kind of tastes a little bit like a cucumber in a way. Uh, anyways, I wanted to show you guys. I came out here picking chamomile the other day and I just started picking, picking, picking. And then I come over here and I'm like, oh, I have another chamomile plant over here. And so I started picking this and then I got inside and realized this is not chamomile. <laughs> this is feverfew. And I literally planted them beside each other. Oh my gosh. Anyways, they both have kind of the same medicinal effects. They're both a very calming herb. In fact, feverfew is a really good herb if you have migraines or headaches. Um, it is a very, very good tea to have um, to kind of help with that. Now, disclaimer, I am definitely not a doctor. I am not a certified herbalist. That is just what I have read from my research. So that's why I'm growing it so that we have something kind of, when we get headaches, we can just have some fever few tea. Okay, let's head back inside. It's kind of humid out here. We're gonna get the jam started. I had to go and change my top and put a tank top on because I came inside and I realized that the house was sitting at 80 degrees. It was a little hot in here, so I shut all the windows and turned on the air conditioning. I could be having a hot flash also. It could be any of those factors. Anyways, let's get our fruit into our big stock pot. So we are gonna start with the blackberry one first. So I'm just gonna put the blackberries in here. And we're gonna turn it on to about a medium, and then we're gonna get these to start to thaw out and cook a little bit. Because I don't want our blackberry jam to be full of seeds, I am going to run it through my food mill. This, I believe, I actually got from Stephen's grandfather when he passed away, and I love it. So you just put it in, 
give it a little turn. It has this thing on the bottom. Anyways, it catches all of the seeds. It definitely takes a lot longer to make jam with because you take the seeds out, but I have learned that blackberry jam with seeds, raspberry jam with seeds, they're not fun to eat. I prefer the seedless. So we're gonna do that with the blackberry and then same with the raspberry strawberry jam. We're gonna run it through the food mill and get the seeds out of those because those raspberries are pretty seedy. So just give this, this will probably take maybe about 15 minutes just to get to boiling and then mushy and then what we'll do is we'll run it through the food mill and then at that point we will weigh out our four cups and make sure that we have exactly what we need for the jam recipe. When it comes to canning, I really like to stay with the suggested guidelines um, just to make sure that we're doing safe canning. Now, because we're using Pomona's pectin, we can use honey or we can use sugar and we can use like almost nothing in it. Like no, hardly any sweetener. With the blackberry, what we're gonna do is we're gonna can it with honey. So I have this honey from Azure. It's pretty rock solid. <laughs> show you it's pretty crystallized in there but that's fine it'll it'll melt um, so we're gonna use honey with the blackberry and then we're gonna use sugar with the um, strawberry raspberry I'm just getting my uh, coffee because I still have not had a chance to drink it it is now completely warm so I'm turning it into a nice coffee so I'm gonna sit down wait for those to come to a boil and then we'll come back when it's ready for the next step this is definitely soft now. So I'm gonna take it and strain it out. Do it in little batches. This is what we are left with. So I'm just gonna give that to the chickens. All right, so I have my um, measuring cup here. Let me get my spatula. And what did I say, four? So we're going for eight cups. That gave us two cups, so we might only be doing one thing of the recipe. Okay, let's get the other one done. Before we can go on to the next step with Pomona's pectin, you actually have to get some calcium dissolved in some water. I don't know the exact science to it. If you go to the Pomona's website, it actually explains how their pectin works. From what I understand, you put the calcium in with the fruit and that calcium reacts with the pectin that you're using, which allows you to use a lower sugar with their jam. So you have to mix up some of this calcium powder with half a cup of water. So I have half a cup of warm water there and then I am going to add in half a teaspoon of this calcium powder. My hands are dyed purple from the blackberries. We're gonna take half a teaspoon of this calcium powder. In fact, I think it just has half a teaspoon in here. You get a lid on it and shake it up. With jam, you get to water bath, which makes me really excited because I love water bathing it. It's just, it's simple. And jam comes together really, really quick. So I have my jelly jars in here. I'm actually gonna turn this down like way, way down. Um, just keep that nice and warm while we get the jam assembled. So we ended up with just over four cups of mashed berries, which is perfect because with the recipe, we need to have four cups. So we're gonna add this back to our pot. And then with this recipe, we need to add two teaspoons of this calcium water to this fruit. I have the heat turned off on it right now too. I just added like a little bit more because we're just a hair over the um, four cups. We're gonna give this a good stir. 
I'm gonna leave this off of the heat for now because we're gonna get our honey ready. Now it says room temperature honey. This is still, it's a little bit hard, but that's fine. We're gonna measure out one cup and then we're gonna put it into this bowl because we have to mix our pectin with it. So we have our one cup. Alrighty, and for our recipe, we need to add two teaspoons of pectin into this honey. And then we have to really mix it in well. I have the heat turned on now. Okay, so it says bring fruit to a full boil and then add your sweetener. And then it says stir for one to two minutes until it's dissolved. So it was already kind of hot from before. Shouldn't take long to bring it up to a full boil. I'm excited because this is actually the first time that I've made a jam with honey and I'm really, really excited. I've been using Pomona's the last couple of years and I am really liking it like I'm liking the low sugar but this is the first time I'm experimenting with honey and I thought blackberry and honey that just sounds so perfect all right we're at a boil now we're gonna add the honey give this a stir and we're gonna keep stirring it until it comes back up to a full boil Okay, I'm gonna take it off the heat because we're back to a boil. And I've been stirring it for about one minute. Let's get our jars out. Definitely put too many jars in there, but it's better to have too many ready than not enough. <laughs> so we are gonna put this into here and then we're gonna leave a quarter inch head space. I was gonna say, if you don't have one of those ball measuring tools, a quarter inch is this top line here. So this is one inch, you have half inch, and then you have a quarter inch. Just an easy way to tell if you don't have a little measuring tool. All right, what we're gonna do next, we're gonna get these debubbled. Make sure there's no air bubbles in there anywhere. Because this is super sticky and I am super messy, we are gonna clean the rims. This is just a wet washcloth here. Put our lids on. Our rings to fingertip tight. Get them in the canner. We're gonna turn the heat back up on this element. We're gonna bring it to a full rolling boil. Once it gets to the boil, we will start our timer for 10 minutes, quick and easy. So I had a little bit left over. This is obviously not a full jar, so let's give it a little taste. It's a little hot right, it's a little hot right now, but let's just give it a taste. It's good. I really like it with the honey. It's not overly sweet and the blackberries definitely come through in it. Now, even with doing that food mill, you do get seeds in it, but it is not like, you're not crunching. Like there's just a couple of little seeds left, but super happy with the way this turned out. So just gonna let this cool down and then I'll put this in my fridge. While that is coming to a boil, we're gonna get the strawberries and raspberries on the stove top so that those can get melted and we can get those strained out. blackberry jam all done and we have the strawberry raspberry one all strained out. I added the calcium water in here. I'm gonna do this one with sugar. I ended up with like four and a quarter cups. This smells really really good. These strawberries are super super sweet. I went strawberry picking last year and these are the strawberries from that. So they are super fresh and I froze them when they were at the peak of the freshness. So they're very very sweet. So I think one and a half cups of sugar should be perfectly fine for this. I'm just gonna bring that to a boil. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I wanna thank you guys so much for coming along with me and I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're watching this and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys.